Welcome to our lecture online. The next thermodynamic process we want to review is the isothermic process. And what's unique about the isothermic process is that the internal energy is equal to zero, or it, I should say the change in internal energy is equal to zero. And the reason why is in an isothermic process the temperature doesn't change and the change in internal energy is dependent on the change in the temperature. So since there's zero change in the temperature, there's zero internal energy change. And so that makes it easy when we look at the first law of thermodynamics, delta U goes to zero, which means that Q equals W. But in other words, the amount of work done by the gas is equal to the amount of heat added to the gas. All the heat added to the gas is utilized to do the work and none of it is added to the internal energy of the gas in an isothermic process. So starting with one mole of diatomic gas, a volume of 20 liters to begin with, we don't know the final volume, we know the pressure in the beginning and the pressure at the end. So the question always is, how much work is done by the gas, what is the, what is the heat added to the gas, and what is the change in internal energy? Which of course, this part is already done. We know that this must be equal to zero because we're dealing with an isothermic process. Now the work done by an, iso, an, uh, an isothermic process can be written as nRT times the natural log of the final volume divided by the initial volume. Since when we use the ideal gas equation, nRT is equal to the product of the pressure and the volume, we could also write it as the product of the pressure and the volume at A, or the product and the pressure and the volume of B. So let's now try to calculate the work done. A good thing to do is to figure out in the equation what we know and what we don't know. So here we know the number of moles, R is a constant, so that's known. We know the volume at A, but we don't know the volume at B, and we don't know the temperature. So there's two unknowns in that equation. The next equation, we know both the pressure and volume at A, so they're, they're both known. We know the volume at A, but we don't know the volume at B. So we need to figure that out in that equation. And over here, we do know the pressure at B. The pressure at B is one atmosphere, but we don't know the volume at B. We know the volume at A, but not at B. So neither one of those three equations at this point can be used to find the work done until we find the temperature and the volume at B. How do we do that? We use the, first, we use the ideal gas equation to find both the temperature and the volume at B. So solving this for temperature, we get the following. So temperature is equal to the pressure times the volume divided by N times R. Now, let's take it at point A because we know both the pressure and the volume at A. So this is equal to two atmospheres times 101,325 pascals per atmosphere. And the volume at A is 0 0.2 cubic meters divided by the number of moles, which is one. And R is the gas constant 8.315, that's joules per mole times Kelvin. And at this point, we need a calculator to see what we have. Okay, so 101,325 times 2 times 0 0.02 divided by 8.315, and it's 487.4 Kelvin. That's equal to 487.4 Kelvin for the temperature. And of course, that's the same everywhere in the process because it's an isothermic process. The temperature does not change. Now we need the volume at B. So we solve this equation again, but now for the volume, and it will be the volume at B. That is equal to nRT divided by the pressure at B. Of course, these need to match up. And so in this case, that's equal to 1 times 8.315 times the temperature which we just found all divided by the pressure at B which is one atmosphere 101.325 all right so if we now get a calculator what do we get 8.315 times 487.4 divided by 101.325 and that's exactly double that it was at A, which, of course, we could have predicted that. Why could we have predicted that? Because we know that the temperature is constant, and so that means if the pressure goes to half, the volume must double. So that's what we found. 
The last thing to do is to find the work done. The work done is therefore equal to nRT times the natural log of V at B divided by V at A. Doesn't matter which of the three equations we pick. Now we know everything, the temperature and the volume at B. So in this case, number of moles is 1. R is 8.315. The temperature is 487.4. And that's the natural log then of VB over VA, which essentially um, a ratio of 2. Oop, this is 4 divided by 0 0.02. So that's essentially the natural log of 2. So we take 2, take the natural log times 487.4 times 8.315 and it tells us that it's 2,809 joules. And then of course since the work done is equal to the heat added, that is also equal to, oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted heat added, not work. And so that's also equal to Q. There we go. Q. And that gives us the final answers for both the work done and the heat added to the gas. And that is how it's done when we have an isothermic process.